Vice President Kamala Harris in Japan as tensions rise in the Indo-Pacific. Democrats and Republicans sounding fresh alarms over China. We look into a letter sent to the president's desk from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senator Chuck Schumer. Facebook taking down over 80 accounts from China. New details say the move involves the upcoming U.S. midterm elections. A war on beef. Why is American beef getting sent to China, while Americans unknowingly consume meat from elsewhere? They think that they are eating USDA prime beef that is from U.S., you know, territory or U.S. soil, but it usually isn't. And a note from the Solomon Islands, reportedly saying it won't sign onto a U.S. security deal, prompting concern over the nation's ties to China. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. China is undermining the international rules-based order. That's according to U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris on Wednesday during a visit to Japan. Hindi's Chenny Wu has the details. Vice President Kamala Harris delivered a speech aboard the USS Howard naval ship at Japan's Yokosuka naval base Wednesday. China has challenged the freedom of the seas. China has flexed its military and economic might to coerce and intimidate its neighbors. She called China's behavior in the East China Sea, South China Sea and Taiwan Strait disturbing and pledged to deepen unofficial ties with Taiwan. The United States believes that peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait is an essential feature of a free and open Indo-Pacific. And we will continue to fly, sail and operate undaunted and unafraid wherever and whenever international law allows. Harris is in the region to lead a presidential delegation for the state funeral of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and to meet with government officials from Japan, South Korea and Australia. After Japan, she'll travel to South Korea where she's expected to visit the demilitarization zone between North Korea and South Korea. Chenny Wu, NTD News. Military action in North Korea. The country fired two short-range ballistic missiles off its east coast on Wednesday, just a day before U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris is set to arrive in Seoul. That's according to South Korea's military. The launch went off as a U.S. aircraft carrier and its strike group arrived in South Korea for joint military exercises. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said the North's provocations will further strengthen U.S. and South Korean deterrence. Following a stop in Japan, BP Harris will visit the heavily fortified Korean demilitarized zone on Thursday. Alarms are going off in Washington, and they're all about China. Lawmakers from both sides of the aisle have sent letters to the Biden administration about their concerns. And it's Iris Tao has more. Ramping up oversight of U.S. investments going into China. That's what lawmakers, including House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, are urging President Biden to do in a Tuesday letter. Congress has been considering legislation that would give the U.S. government new powers to bar billions of dollars in investments from going to China. But the proposal was stripped from the CHIPS Act passed in August. And now it still awaits further negotiations. The lawmakers say our national security cannot afford to wait citing an urgent need to protect supply chains and intellectual property. And thus, as 51 Republican lawmakers also sent a letter this week warning the administration of Chinese threats. Their focus, meanwhile, is on China buying up American farmland. Lawmakers led by Congressman Carlos Jimenez point to a Chinese manufacturer's acquisition of land just miles away from a U.S. Air Force base in North Dakota. And as these purchases raise red flags on the Hill, lawmakers are introducing legislation to ban foreign adversaries from buying land anywhere near U.S. military bases. Though further actions are needed to make that into law. Reporting in Washington, D.C., Iris Tao, NTD News. In other news, China is reportedly meddling in the upcoming U.S. midterm elections. Tech company and Facebook owner Meta says it removed fake China-based accounts targeting Americans with political content. 
NDD's Jeremy Sandberg has more on Meta's findings. Meta's social media platforms, Facebook and Instagram, took down a network of around 80 Chinese accounts involved in what company executives say was a political influence operation. They say the China-based propaganda operation was the first one they knew about and disrupted that focused on targeting users in the United States ahead of November's midterm elections. Meta reported the fake accounts posed as both liberal and conservative Americans in different states. The accounts posted political memes and commented on public figures' posts. The operation pushed messages on issues like gun rights and abortion. Meta gave one example of an account commenting on a Facebook post by Republican Senator Marco Rubio asking him to stop gun violence and using the hashtag RubioChildrenKiller. Most of the accounts were active from November 2021. The network was also active on Twitter. A Twitter spokesperson says the company is aware of Meta's report and has also taken down the accounts. Meta says the same network also set up fake accounts posing as people in the Czech Republic, criticizing the Czech government on its approach to China. An executive from Meta says they do not have enough evidence to say who in China was behind the activity, but that the accounts stuck to a shift pattern that coincided with a 9 to 5, Monday to Friday work schedule during working hours in China. Jeremy Sandberg, NTD News. The Biden administration is working to rally Pacific Island leaders, but this week that effort met with a setback. That's as the Solomon Islands reportedly said it would not sign a joint declaration the U.S. will soon unveil. President Biden is hosting a dozen of leaders from Pacific countries on Wednesday and Thursday. The forum is the first of its kind and comes as Washington and the Chinese regime compete for influence in the region. Beijing has made major advances in recent years. The Solomon Islands broke its long-standing diplomatic ties with Taiwan in 2019. Earlier this year, the nation struck a security pact with the Chinese communist regime. That deal allows more Chinese security presence in the country. It stoked fear in the West that China may eventually operate a military base there, just a thousand miles from Australia's coast. According to Reuters, the Solomon Islands sent a note to the Pacific Islands Forum, telling other members it would not sign the U.S. proposed declaration and that it needs more time to consider the matter. The Chinese yuan has hit a record low against the U.S. dollar. The internationally traded yuan is at its lowest since data first became available in 2011. On the other hand, the dollar continues to surge. Investors tend to see the U.S. currency as a safe haven for their money in turbulent times. The yuan fell past the 7 per dollar line last week, a threshold Chinese officials have been trying to uphold in the past decade. They've only allowed the yuan to cross the line during especially trying times for the economy, during Trump's trade war and the beginning of the pandemic, for example. A weaker yuan makes Chinese goods cheaper and more attractive for international consumers. In the past, the U.S. has accused the Chinese regime of intentionally devaluing its currency. That's to boost exports and make imports from the U.S. more expensive. News of the record low comes as China's economic growth looks increasingly dim. The World Bank expects Chinese growth to lag behind the rest of Asia for the first time since 1990. It's largely blamed on the regime's zero COVID-19 policy and China's real estate crisis. TikTok is hammering out a plan with U.S. lawmakers. The short-form video-sharing app may be able to change its security policies without requiring its Chinese parent company, ByteDance, to sell it. The New York Times reported Monday that TikTok and the Biden administration have drafted a preliminary agreement. It's to resolve national security concerns. But the terms aren't settled yet. A TikTok spokesperson declined to comment on the report, but said the company was confident about being able to fully satisfy all reasonable U.S. national security concerns. It's been over two years since a U.S. national security panel ordered ByteDance to sever ties to TikTok. That's because of fears that U.S. user data could be passed on to China's communist regime. TikTok has more than a billion monthly active users. It counts the United States as its largest market. TikTok could face a $29 million fine over a possible breach of the UK's data protection law. That's by failing to protect children's privacy when they are using the video sharing platform. 
The UK Information Commissioner's Office said TikTok may have processed the data of children under 13 without appropriate parental consent. It also said TikTok may have failed to provide transparent, easily understood information to its users. The office said its findings are not final and that it will consider any representations from TikTok before making a final decision. The government is pushing through its online safety bill, which requires technology companies to protect children from harmful content. Back on the military front, the UK is joining a number of extended military drills. The training involves multiple nations in the Indo-Pacific, including Australia, Japan and South Korea. According to the UK's Royal Air Forces, or RAF, the exercises will run until December as part of the UK's continued focus on the Indo-Pacific region. Four RAF Typhoon fighters and one air-to-air refueling aircraft travel to Australia. There, they'll participate in exercise pitch black in Darwin. The jets join other aircraft from 17 countries. The deployment comes as the Royal Navy celebrates one year of permanent aircraft carrier presence in the region. UK Defence Secretary Ben Wallace said the long-term deployment demonstrates the UK's commitment to maintaining its historical ties to the region. The increased engagement follows former Prime Minister Boris Johnson's announcement last year that the country's vision is to deeply engage with the Indo-Pacific in support of trade, shared security and shared values by 2030. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for more than a year. Here's what to look out for in our second half. A war on beef. Why is Texas raised beef being sold to China? Well, Texans consume beef from other countries. Plus the latest on the race of artificial intelligence dominance between two superpowers, the US and China. Who's further ahead on the game? We hear from John Moody, former executive vice president of Fox News for more. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow. The 2022 NTD 8th International Chinese Vocal Competition will be held from September 29th to October 2nd at the Merkin Hall of Kaufman Music Center in New York City. The competition is honored to have specially invited vocalists with the world-renowned Shen Yun Performing Arts to serve on its panel of judges. The gold award is $10,000. For more information, please visit vocal.ntdtv.com.